All right, Dave, I've, gone, I've started the recording, so uh, feel free to take it away. Thank you, Len. Uh, so, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Myers. I'm a senior principal product manager here on what we call the Intelligent Mainframe team. And I'm just going to give you a quick overview or run through of what we're actually working on back here in the lab. So there's a couple parts we want to go through. Really starting off by, by telling you what we're hearing from, from folks out, out, out there like you. You know, what are the kind of challenges they're looking at and bringing forward some of the solutions that we are developing to try and help with some of that. Uh, part of this is an evolution path that, that we're developing here internally to help you move up, you know, the maturity mod, the maturity chain, so to speak, but also giving you some of the use cases that we're actually delivering right now. So, so to start off, what are we hearing about what's going on out there? So, so at a very high level, the, the way that customers are interacting with, with you and your mainframes is really changing. You know, it used to be, as a bank, we had banker hours, nine to five. It, it used to be that we had very predictable workloads that happened, you know, during the middle of the day, ample batch windows at, at you know, overnight hours or on the weekends. Now that's all changing. Anybody anywhere can touch their finger onto a smartphone and kick off a transaction on the mainframe. I can be in Japan accessing an ATM and have that go through my bank back in Atlanta or Texas. And so really what's happening is our systems can now be used anywhere at any time. You know, the web was sort of the first evolution of this where every day at 9 o'clock people came in and we saw giant spikes where people checked their balances or, 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 or looked up their, their policies and whatnot. Now it's 24-7. It's a lot of the customers we talk to, their SLAs are at or, or already at or nearing 100% availability all the time. We're getting pressed for extremely high performance with, you know, millisecond level transaction response all the time everywhere, right? And the mainframe is, is a key part of that. You know, a lot of the apps that I use on my phone or I use on the web are, are tied to the mainframe in some way. You know, we look at statistics like 70% of transactions still flow, flow through a mainframe in some way. You know, this morning I was checking my bank balance. That goes through a mainframe. 55% of apps rely on the mainframe in some way. And because of that, we're really seeing an increase in those mainframe workloads. You know, a lot of the customers you talk to the mainframe is not going away. If anything, it's increasing in usage, especially given the fact that it, it is our system of record, so to speak. 70% of the world's data resides on a mainframe somewhere. You know, the business and the world, the world's businesses basically rely on the mainframe for a ton of what they do. And so we keep adding to it and, and reutilizing it in new and different ways that weren't intended for its in original usage and original design. You know, we see that growing workload, and part of that's also growing in complexity. You know, a single transaction that gets kicked off by a single finger somewhere can drive hundreds of system interactions, be that fraud checks or looking at reward programs and customer loyalty, verifying users, doing things like, you know, authorizing and, and checking that you're, you're available for multiple services, using third parties to actually come in and, and add some value into the services that you provide not even talking about security in terms of encryption and, and decryption and, and authorization and access, or just running reports off of all this. All these things are happening concurrently or, or asynchronously even, and it makes it just very hard to look at everything. You know, add that to this DevOps stuff that's now coming up, right? Development has these new methodologies like Agile that are pushing more and more changes more and more frequent, frequently. You know, I, I love this image of trying to change the tire as we're actually driving the car. That's the reality for the mainframe, and it's been that way for several years or decades. We, you know, our responsibility is keeping this thing up, available, and highly performant, even as we're driving down the road. We have to keep the car moving, even if we have to change the tire, change the oil, uh, you know, pull out some spark plugs. We got to keep it going down the road and keep it up at all times, right? So, so really, this is the situation that we find ourselves in. We have 24 by 7 by 365 operation. We have growing workloads. We have more increasing, we have increasing complexity on those workloads. We have more frequent deployment. 
it's a fun time for everybody out there, I'm sure. I mean, everybody, I'm sure, loves their job. There's no pressure and, and no problems, right? You know, so, so externally, many people don't even know that the mainframe sits behind the things they do every day. No one sits there and thinks that when I, when I swipe my, my card, it's actually going through 100 different transactions on the back end. But the reality is that this is an extremely complex system of systems that we're actually dealing with. These are some of the most complex systems and applications on the planet. We have multiple different pieces that we're dealing with, whether it be databases, distributed stuff, systems, infrastructure, networks, storage. It's, it's a conglomeration of tons of different pieces that have been built up over time and over the years to make it what it is today. On, the, on one side, it's great because it's stable. On the other, it, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. You know, because of this complexity, we have all kinds of different people who specialize in different places. You know, we have, you know, a Sherman, for example, who specializes in systems infrastructure, a Debbie who, who specializes in network. Or everybody's got that guy in Secaucus, New Jersey, that's over the wire doing something that's, that's close to some partner systems that I'm using. So we have this very complex system and lots of people who are touching different parts of the elephant trying to keep it going. Now, especially on the mainframe, you know, people are starting to leave. And what's starting to fill them in is some of the challenges that, that we hear all the time from VPs of operations and infrastructure that are out there. So we're looking at this in terms of, you know, this is what we're managing. Now, when something goes wrong, what happens? We hear all the time about when something goes wrong, we don't actually know exactly what it might be, so we get lots of people together, everybody looks at their tools, everybody looks at their boards, everybody says, nope, not my problem, I'm green, and eventually you start finger pointing, drilling down, trying to figure out what that real root cause is. You know, it may start with receiving a slowdown called the network person. That may lead to a kick system programmer. That may lead to a storage person. That may lead back into a distributed, distributed portion of, of the workload, right? It may, a lot of times the mainframe isn't even the problem in a lot of these. But we're spending our time sitting on these calls waiting for people to figure out what's going wrong, even if it's not something that we can solve, right? So the reality is malfunctions happen. Systems go down, errors occur, add-ins happen. When these, things go, when these things occur, the pressure is on to repair them as quickly as possible. The thing that we hear from customers over and over again is I have to drive down time to repair, time to remediate. We have to avoid issues and incidents and events at all possible, right? We have to, we have to aim for that 100% uptime, 100% availability, and as fast as freaking possible for as low cost as possible. Dealing with those constraints is, is our challenge and a lot of fun if, if we look at it in the right way, right? So these are some of the things that we hear when we go out and we talk to, to, a, to a lot of people. You know, it takes too long to identify the root cause and remediate them. Back to that complex system diagram, you know, I may start with and looking at my network, I may jump into a transaction gateway, I may look at an OTMA, I may look at something going on in a transaction server, I may look at a database. There's just a lot of places to look and try and track something down. And couple that with the fact that you may not have access to all the bits and pieces, there's lots of people who own different parts of the system. The knowledge isn't necessarily, the knowledge is there, it's just federated throughout your organization. And that's where we come with these war rooms. Because that knowledge is federated across the system, because no one owns everything, we basically get people together, lots of people sometimes, if it's a really sub one type of issue, and work through what's actually going on and how to fix it. Communication efficiency is paramount, but it's really difficult. You know, especially if you're dealing with situations where some people are globally distributed sitting in Europe or, or Asia and the United States talking over the phone, bringing together the different parts of the system, not just in your organization, but across the wire to partners, it's just extremely hard, right? And we're seeing that this is growing. There's more escalations, more one-offs, more firefighting, and there's not enough people who actually deal with everything. You know, there's a lot of false positives. There's not enough people to deal with all of these. So we have to do something to make the situation better. 
So when we look at what actually happens, when an event occurs, what do we do? The first thing we see is we gather lots of data. We look at a lot of monitoring across our applications, our networks, our database, our storage, our security, our systems, our subsystems. Different people come in and look at different parts of that information, figure out what's going on, figure out what's going wrong, talk, investigate, poke, prod, diagnose, war room, those kind of things. We get a bunch of people together and they try and talk to make those linkages across the various parts of the, the enterprise to figure out where is the breakdown occurring. Eventually, we figure out what to do to remediate it and everything goes back to steady state operation at, at some point, right? We hope it never happens again. So really what we're trying to focus on here is, is that middle part, right? That, that's the really hard, slow, painful part in the middle of that getting everybody together. It's very costly, it's very time consuming, and, and honestly, it's just really inefficient. So what can we do to try and fix some of this is, is where we're focusing from, from CA, right? We look at what's actually happening and we talk about information overload. You're bringing all this data together. You're looking at all kinds of different screens. You're looking at things on the web, things on 3270. You may even be getting like mobile SMS notifications, who knows? Everything is coming at you. You're drowning in data, trying to figure out what's going on. And maybe that you're seeing multiple alerts go wrong, right? If I have a storage issue, that storage issue may trip something in Kix, trip something in the network, trip something on mobile, trip something that's over in, in WebSphere, et cetera, right? Trying to plow through all of these different alerts to figure out which is really the one that I want to act on it's just really hard. And add that to the fact that a lot of times these things don't come up until I have to do something right now. It's a lot of pressure. We're being reactive to what's up going on. We're fighting fires, so to speak. The, the number one job is to put the fire out as fast as possible and get back to operation. These are the kind of things that, that we need to address. These are the kind of things that we need to make better. So this is where we're coming in from, from CA, right? We have this, this overall vision from our GM about a lean mainframe, focusing on a couple parts around mainframe economics, helping to exploit more of the platform, drive down MIPS, optimize performance, doing this in a secure and compliant way so that we can actually make sure that all that data that we own, that 70% of the business data doesn't leak out and we end up on the front page. But we also have to be agile to that DevOps angle talking about how, how do we serve the business, bring out new function, bring out new capabilities, bring out improved performance in a, in a rapid way. And all that feeding into how do we become more efficient over time? How do we automate what we're doing so that we can take fat fingering and we can take errors out of the system, right? How do we improve those efficiencies, improve our staff capabilities to deliver more with less? So this is where we're starting to talk about in the middle, that intelligent system, that intelligent operations. So where we're coming from with the intelligent mainframe group is building out that system intelligence. We want to lift the burden off of what is on your back today and put it more onto a set of software or a set of systems and applications that can do the low hanging fruit for you and give you more time and less pressure so you can work on the fun stuff like optimizing your system, doing what if analysis, playing around with is this going to improve my overall performance, is this going to simplify my world. So what we're trying to do is bring together things that we have from CA in terms of, you know, our domain knowledge, you know, our ability to, to consume a lot of, of data and actually process it along with your analytical skills, your tools, the, the things that you're actually gathering today in data, your expertise. We want to bring this all together so that we can do honest to goodness data driven analysis, data driven decision making, data driven collaboration, data driven automation. So instead of making reactive decisions, we're actually coming in and making it in a more informed and intelligent way. You know, that, that goal of making the data do the work for you instead of you having to, to, to do the work yourself, right? We're building advanced algorithms and building in some machine learning capabilities to, to help you do this. So, you know, we had that picture before of I'm gathering all this data, I'm getting a whole bunch of people together, and after a while we sort of drive into some remediation, right? The vision that we have is you can leverage that data you already have. On the mainframe, we have more than enough data to shake a stick at across SMF, RMF, all of our monitoring tools, our homegrown, our vendor stuff. There's lots of stuff out there in terms of data utilized. 
it's that middle ground about now utilizing that data, finding patterns, putting the data in front of the right person so we can predict things, avoid those incidents, remediate things if they do occur. We have a lot of these tools already from CA, as well as from the, you know, the, the ecosystem that we're starting to put together and feed this into this new collaboration and intelligence engine that we're building and use that to drive into automation. For us, that's ops MDS, for example, but it could be a remediate, uh, an auto, a manual activity or, or, another, or another product that does automation. You know, a lot of companies out there do this sort of flow. I take in a lot of data, I chug it and figure out what to do. We're also working to close the loop, right? Our vision is that this is a closed loop system. It's not just that we're sucking in the data and figuring out what's going on. We're also helping learn from what you do on the back end and feed that back into the middle as well. So we can figure out when this pattern occurs, these are the steps that you took, and we can turn that back into automation over time or turn that back into guidance based on the last 70 times we saw this pattern, you did this, and really turn that into something that now we can start to take over those repeatable patterns for you and turn it into an automated activity and optimize those future actions helping to take that burden off of you and move it onto the tool so that you're not repeating yourself over and over and over again. So this is really that vision that we have. When something goes wrong, we want to bring all that place together. We want to get, create that single place for you to look. Bring together data from your applications, your systems, your storage, your network, your, your, what automation you're running, your databases. Start to correlate all that data across all those silos that you have today. Today you have all that data, you're doing that correlation semi-manually, we think we can do it in an automated way. So we can actually find those patterns. We can use those patterns to help avoid the similar situations and avoid those problems in the future. This leads into actually optimizing what you do because you're not solving the same thing over and over again. And if we can solve it for you and you're not solving it over and over again, that helps you drive better availability, improve that overall experience in a way that is extremely low touch for you. So there's really four things that we're trying to drive towards to make that po possible for you. So the first is really around prediction. We're working to create analytics that we embed with all of our products to detect what's normal versus abnormal, cut down on those false positives and really get you to the things you have to act on two or three or four hours ahead of what you normally have today. The goal is more time on the clock so that you can make intelligent, <laughs> informed actions as opposed to reacting when things are breaking loose. We want to take those predictions and actually feed that into remediation. So we're building out automation and the ability to take these predictive alerts and then drive automation on them so that we can actually trigger things that we should do based on what you actually have in your kitty today. You already have a whole bunch of automation. You, we have these predictions. Now we're going to start to link them up. For those times you don't have automations, it's really about collaborating across the team to figure out what to do. You know, we want to make that collaboration as efficient as possible. How do you share data between all these teams? How do you share data between all these people? How do you get to a single view of what's going on and really cut through all the weeds as fast as possible to get to that root cause ASAP, right? And then finally, we want to build in some continuous improvement capabilities. How do we learn from what's going on? How do we take feedback from that end point of the cycle so that we can figure out how do we narrow down the possibilities of what should be happening the next time this pattern occurs? So the goal here is really that shift from reactive to proactive that I'm sure a lot of our bosses have been talking about. We want to move from staring at all these different screens up on that giant war room, uh, that war room board to something that's more consolidated, something that's giving us more insight and, and fewer things to look at. We might get to the information we need as quick as possible so we can figure out what to do and act on it. That's the system that we're building. So I talked about, you know, helping you along that journey to build that, that environment up. So a lot of us have a baseline of, of where we are today. But this is how I at least talk about evolving into that, that larger system where it can take over all that low-hanging fruit for us. Today, we're really on the left-hand side talking about react, reacting, looking at time to remediate, you know, 
firefighting, closing down things that actually rear their ugly head. Where we're trying to move towards, I don't want any outages at all. I don't want to have to remediate anything. I want to take care of things before their problems. It starts off really around collaborating more efficiently, helping the system learn how you actually look at various parts of the system, helping us figure out where those patterns actually lie so that we can now start to act on them. The second part is, is moving up into detecting anomalies. It's not just looking at metrics in real time, but looking at are they trending way up too fast, way down too fast, or, or even looking at is this what I expect the system to be acting at given that it's a Tuesday and it's not end of quarter, right? How do we learn from the past to figure out am I acting in a weird way right now before I trip that static threshold that I may be using today? Moving on from that, not just anomalies, but looking at patterns looking at how a failure might cascade from a storage issue to a transaction uh, to a transaction processing issue to a network issue. You know, how do we start to bring all these different alerts that are coming together into what's the real problem I need to solve? And eventually tying this off into the automation that I need to do in the end. How do I identify a root cause as quickly as possible? How do we give the guidance in terms of what to do to the right people at, at the right time? or even automate this response based on policies that we set to say, I've seen this 80 times before, just do it for me. So we're really at the starting point of this, trying to help move you guys up the curve. Part of this that's new that you may see us talking about is we have a new suite we call the CA Mainframe Operations Intelligence Suite. It's bringing together a lot of the different pieces that I've been talking about, information and monitoring and management across systems, network, databases, your, your automation, your storage, for example. And on top of this, we're building analytics to help correlate and learn what, how network, Im, network impacts database, how database impacts systems, and how that end-to-end -end picture of what a business application looks like gets brought together. We're aggregating data across all those domains. We're starting to correlate those metrics across the domains. We're building in learning algorithms to figure out is this what we actually are expecting or not expecting? Helping to understand those interdependencies between the different subsystems to help give you better insight, better knowledge, and drive better root cause analysis, eventually driving down that remediation time, helping to give this to lower skilled people so your SMEs can do the fun work, and overall improving that customer experience that, that you're, you're supposed to drive to. The two big pieces that we're delivering this time that you'll see is I call this, the first part, the Team Collaboration Hub. It's, we call this the Mainframe Team Center. It's this modern, consolidated view of all the information and activity on your mainframe. We have this modernized view so that we can bring together information across systems, network, storage, for example. These are dynamic dashboards that we have some out-of-the-box ones, but also that you can customize on your, by yourself on the fly. You just click that plus button up in the middle and you can create whatever dashboard you want. I've created some that say this is my credit card application and I'm showing the stores utilized by that application, the transaction down to individual kicks regions as well as the network traffic all in one board. We have boards that show you this for particular LPARs, for an entire tech, for an entire storage group as an example. You can build it the way that you want to. We're really providing those out-of-the-box widgets, the, the, the information that's displayed, the connection back to the monitoring on ZOS so that you can compose it the way that you want to. In addition, you can configure your own metrics, configure your alarms, figure out what color that you want to show for different things, and we can show that to you. Now, we've enabled this to start off in that mainframe operations intelligence suite, as well as in Vantage for storage management, in SysView, for performance management and NetMaster for network management. You're going to see this common framework roll out across a variety of products starting with these, extending to a couple more in the future. The idea behind this is trying to help you become more efficient in that collaboration. Now I call this flipping the relationship. Today you go to the tool, you go to your network monitor, your performance monitor, your storage monitor, you copy and paste data in between, you correlate things in your head. We're trying to take that burden off of you by actually utilizing that data you have today and bringing it to a single place. That's the intent behind some of this mainframe team center work. We're bringing the data to you so that you can figure out how do I want to actually move between them. We help hot link between things, for example. 
This isn't just useful for you as a single person, it's also useful for your team on those war room situations. We quite commonly hear, when we're getting these war rooms, everybody looks at their board and everyone says, my green, I'm green, not my problem. So getting to the point where everybody's sort of looking at that same set of data, you can limit the amount of discrepancies, limit the amount of disagreements, limit the amount of arguing there is about whose fault it sort of is, right? It helps you get down to, to, to the root cause a lot faster so it, you can identify really where do we need to go. And bringing all that data together and cross-correlating is a very powerful tool for getting MTTR drive down very quickly. The second part that I want to talk about is around predictive analytics. Now, we call this operational intelligence or mainframe team center operational intelligence. So part of this is we're leveraging data from data streams that we give in around performance, as an example. We try and figure out what is expected operation so that you can take action two, three, four hours earlier. We're bringing all that information, we're warehousing it, we're analyzing it, we're applying machine learning algorithms on top of it to create what we call dynamic baselines. So instead of you defining what a static threshold may be, as an example, you know, alert me when I'm over 90% in terms of CPU utilization. We actually try and help you figure out what it should be on a given date at a given time. You know, 90% may be where you gotta run and do something right now so that you don't hit 100. But at a market open condition, 100 may be fine. And if you're on vacation and there's some, some lower skilled operations person sitting there, they may not know that they don't have to act on that alarm and call a lot of people. Or another example could be on a given Tuesday at two o'clock, you're supposed to run about 30%. Today you're running at 50. That's not necessarily something that you should act on, but it's something you may wanna look at. Why are we running at 50%? Why are we running hot versus what we normally do? These are the kind of things that help you take proactive action instead of reactive action. Now, part of this is a lot of technology under the covers. I'm gonna talk a little bit in, the, in, in a couple of slides about how we're making this low touch for you, how we're doing this in an offload eligible way so that you don't have to consume a whole bunch of general purpose processor to make it happen. This is available in that operations intelligence package I talked about, but we also are enabling this in SysView. So these are the two places you'll find it today. We're gonna to try and roll this out across some more products in the future. So again, to that war room situation, you know, being able to correlate those events and metrics to, to quickly figure out what's happening, you know, being able to come in and say, you know, we're normally at 20%, but today we're at 50, that's a great starting place. But we're also starting to correlate this back to what's actually happening and, and that number one question that always gets up asked of what's changed. So by bringing in together all this metric, all this change history, all these things about what's happened in the past and how they're starting to interrelate, you can get down to very quickly, hey, my board said that you changed something in the network 10 minutes before the problem hit. Maybe that's the problem. And they can, per normal, say, well, that shouldn't have actually caused the situation, but pretty quickly you can get to, yeah, that probably is something that we need to roll back. So, Today, we may be looking at all these different parts of history for individual things like network history, storage history, performance history. We're starting to bring this all together so we can cross-correlate across everything for you. So really, this is where we're trying to take you from and that's, you know, first to second step of the evolution. Today, we talk to a lot of people where they're manually setting thresholds. We actually have a two-step process where we're taking you from static thresholds, what we call dynamic, we're actually learning from your history. In the first six to eight weeks of operation of this, you'll see we'll show you that you're going up really fast, down really fast, and you may want to take action. Over time, as we learn, we're actually creating, you know, we're adapting to your workload. We can say that on a given day, on a given time, this is probably what you should be at. Individual spikes you try and, you know, smooth out from a day-to-day -day perspective. And the goal is really reducing that false positive noise, right? We talk to people and they're like, you know, I reduced my alerts from 60,000 to 32,000. I'm like, that's great, you reduced it by half, but you still have 32,000 that you have to deal with. So getting this is what we think is that next step of the evolution, take us from 32,000 down to 3,000, right? That order of magnitude that we want to try and improve on. So just get following up with some use cases for you to think about as you may explore some of this, right? So the first one is around that problem avoidance and remediation. 
you know, if you're a systems engineer, a network engineer, an application DBA, or, or even someone who's a support analyst, right? You're probably dealing with a lot of things that are coming across your desk. You want to figure out which of these should I act on so that I don't get that call at 2 a.m. that something needs to get fixed, right? I want to see multiple views of what's going on. I need to be able to correlate and say it's not a Kix problem. It's probably something on DB2 as fast as possible. So part of what we're doing here is modernizing the UX for, for multiple people. That systems performance analyst, that system engineer, that network engineer, that DBA. We want to create modern views across all this so you can get the information as quickly as possible where you need it. And not just information for your domain, but linking to the other people as well. Being able to come in and define these dashboards, being able to come in and actually put multiple types of information on a single pane of glass, it's a very simple concept, but, but a lot harder in practice. So we're giving you some technology that brings all this together so you can create dashboards the way you want, how you want, where you want, with the information that you want. You know, the bottom line is we're trying to help you drive to that high availability. We're trying to help you notice when things are going wrong in one part of the system that may be two steps removed from you, but in a couple hours is going to be right on your doorstep. So helping avoid those problems bringing together all that information quickly so you can analyze it and drive remediation fast. That second use case is really around that anomaly detection. So as I mentioned before, being able to look at history, being able to look at context, being able to say, based on where I am today at this point in time, am I running the way I expect or, or not expect? That's a highly skilled, that's a high skill sort of situation. We're trying to help the tool actually give you that information, back you up with the decisions that you have to make, or help you know, new people on the floor get up to speed a hell of a lot quicker. All around avoiding detecting those problems that you see, helping to take burden off of you in terms of us maintaining those thresholds instead of you maintaining them over time. And again, that, that theme about seeing multiple views of the data. I want to be able to say what's the history of this metric and this metric if I look at them side by side. Giving you ways of analyzing these things in a lot of easier way. So you can come back and actually look at situations like, I know that my dev team deployed something on Saturday, and then on Sunday we started to trend out of norm, and by Monday I'm really in a bad spot, right? We want to give you those couple days notice so that you can actually act on it before it hits that threshold that you may have been maintaining statically today. Again, bottom line, how do we avoid outages? How do we avoid events? How do we avoid incidents? How do we maintain that high availability? How do we act on these things before they become fires? That, that's really what we're trying to poke on. Now, getting a bit into detail behind some of that, this is really the machine learning algorithms that, that we're working on. We're defining basically three levels what's likely to be, what's less likely, and what's unlikely. You know, it, this isn't standard deviation kind of stuff. This is actually looking at what's actually happening day over day over day over day, week over week over week over week, and trying to normalize out little spikes that may occur versus not occur, right? So on a given day, it may be that at, you know, 8 p.m., I have a partner that comes in and sort of you know, spikes my workload because they run some process on their side. Because it happens every Thursday, that's sort of expected, even though I went from, you know, 50% to 150% utilization as an example. That's a normal set of operation for that given day, that given time, even though the workload spiked an incredible amount versus an anomaly being, well, on a given day and a given time, this is supposed to be at 50, for some reason that's at that 100. That's something you should really look at. So being able to sort of look at what's happening and find out where spikes are normal versus abnormal and helping you narrow down when to act and not to act is really the intention behind this. And we have multiple algorithms that we're using. We're collecting all the data that you're probably already gathering today, sending it through multiple algorithms based on how much information we have starting off with an exponentially weighted moving average, saying, are you going up too fast or down too fast, basically. But over time, actually normalizing things out, using techniques like wavelet decomposition, which is a common uh, signal processing technique, sending it through what we call a kernel density estimator, figuring out what 
the likely bands are so we can give you predictive models. Now we're actually working to actually normalize this out for business cycles. So, you know, a given Friday is different than Black Friday, right? End of quarter, I'm going to have different looking workload than I do on a, a given Tuesday. So we're starting to actually build in and learn from what's occurring in your business, taking out that natural volatility to give you a true view of what is expected operation and when you should act. Now I did mention that there's a lot of chugging behind the scenes going on in this. You know, running these algorithms, it, it is somewhat processor intensive. We don't want to run that on a general purpose processor. You know, when you deploy this, you want to make sure it's running as cheaply and efficiently as possible. So part of what we're doing is we're leveraging the data that you're already collecting on the mainframe, but now we're moving it into a system which can process it at lower cost. You know, for example, on Z Linux. To make this easy, part of what we're doing is we've created this virtual appliance. It's a piece of software. And when you actually get it, it unpacks itself, it sets up an operating system, it sets up all the different componentry so that you don't have to do it yourself. We minimize the amount of skills that you need for learning these off-platform kind of things. So you can take advantage of the cost efficiencies, but you don't necessarily have to scale up an incredible amount to manage it. We're putting in a lot of work so that we can manage it ourselves, being CA, and take that burden off of your back. So we've containerized this. We made it easy to install, easy to maintain, easy to roll out new maintenance to. And we're now working on adding some simple GUI management on top of it to help you understand what's going on, to help you roll back changes, to help you understand when things are going wrong versus going right, to really help with the serviceability of it. We're trying to make this low cost, non-invasive, secure, and something you can actually roll out and get value from by the end of the day. So, so trying to finish up, right? If you look at what we're doing with CA, we have a big push around analytics. We have an analytics center, center of excellence. We're rolling out analytics across multiple products, both on the distributed side and the mainframe side. We've defined reference architectures that we're bringing out into the industry. We have whole design and visualization labs built and building up or built already to help focus on some of those analytics. And we're bringing in uh, new thought leaders and we're bringing in new experts in terms of growing that portfolio of research that we're actually doing. We have experts in your domain. You know, CA has been doing mainframe for several decades. Like, we are one of the few out there who can really understand what's going on deep within your system and respect the fact that you have this heritage that you still have to maintain. At the same time, you need an end-to-end -end view. It, it is mainframe, but it's also all the other stuff. You know, I, I alluded to before, quite often we get on these war room calls, and it's distributed fault. So CA is one of the few companies out there where we have both the distributed side and the mainframe side that can give you that end-to-end -end perspective of everything that you want to look at. You know, we've been doing this for several years. You know, we, we believe that we can be a trusted partner to you as you build up this competency and these capabilities within your organization. You know, to, to prove it to you, come and ask us about it. Contact us. We, we're more than happy to talk about this data science we have going on behind the covers. We have a program where if you are a Cisco user, for example, you can send us your data. We'll run it through our intelligence engines internal to our, our organization. You don't have to set up anything. You just set, send us some of your data and we'll play it back to you. We'll show you how we actually build up these highways. We'll show you when some of the anomalies are actually occurring. And you can help, you know, tell us if we're showing you the right stuff. You know, we're pretty confident from what we've seen that we're actually doing this pretty well. I mean, we've rolled this out to several customers. We've looked at several sets of data and the, the amount of the amount of tracking to the actualities that we've actually found is, is pretty amazing once you see it. We have several, like I was saying, we have several customers who say, I really want to, I really want to bring this in. This is tremendously helpful. You know, we actually came in and we were running this on a test system and someone said, I found an abnormality in the test system. I caught it before I deployed. That's a great story in terms of we avoided the issue before it even became an issue, right? So we're, really excited about this kind of stuff we're doing. This is something that is the big initiative that we have inside of CA, and we really want to help you guys out there be a part of it. 
So any questions before I close out? Hey everybody, if you're not on the phone line, um, you can please feel free to use the Q&A feature right in the WebEx, it's in the lower right of the screen. If you're not seeing that box, um, in the upper right you'll see a question mark icon, so just click on that and that will open for you. Um, I don't see anything right now, Dave. Um, yeah. so, so some of the questions that we, we frequently got at uh, CA World, for example, you know, is, you know, where is this available? So for this operational intelligence piece, these mainframe team center pieces, I mentioned we're rolling this out. It's available in SysView 14.2 right now. If you're a SysView user or a SysView licensee, this is a zero charge feature. You get this included with the base product. It's out there for download right now. If you want to download it, try it, bring it into your shop. Uh, we're open and happy to help if you want to contact us about, you know, helping you get going. We also have this mainframe operations intelligence suite. This is bringing together multiple capabilities. You know, if you want to bring together more of this data, we have upgrade pricing available that will take you to this larger thing that gives you more data flowing into the bigger thing. Um, just talk to your sales guy about it. So it's out there now. If you want to play with it, go ahead. I encourage you to contact us and say, hey, I just want to show you my data and we'll do the best we can to show you what, what we find before you actually try it out and install it on-prem. Any questions come up, Glenn? I am not seeing any. Okay. So I'd like to thank everybody for their time. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. I really Hello. enjoy talking about this stuff. Oh, question. Hello? Hi. Okay, I do have a question. So for the end-to-end, -end, you need the APM agent on the mainframe if we're already running APM on the distributed side. Where would that, that APM agent be installed? Where would the APM agent be installed? On the mainframe, yes. Um, so that's an it depends kind of question, right? So there's some, ag there's some agents that get tied into KICS, for example. There's some which bring in network information. So depending on how deep you want to go into the black box, the mainframe, there's a couple of different configuration options that, that are available. Okay, so it would be more than one agent to, go to get end to end to work. So let me try and clarify that. So there's one APM agent that gets installed, but that talks to multiple data collectors okay, per, okay. per subsystem. If you'd like and to follow that, up on that, I can, yeah. I can take a note and follow up with you on it. Okay, this is Sylvia. Okay. I will make a note of that, Sylvia, and I'll, I'll catch you offline. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Other questions? There's not anything else in the WebEx. Okay. So thank you everybody for your time. If you have any questions at all, uh, I'm here, Len's here, ask them on the community. This is something that we're really excited about and we're, we're looking for people to join our excitement. So thank you very much for joining. Thanks everybody, have a great day.